A headline in a Washington newspaper today asks whether Donald Trump is already president. He is certainly acting like it today. The president-elect met with families and first responders from last week's brutal terrorist attack at Ohio State University. The event comes as Trump continues his search for the best fit to be his top dip diplomat. And on top of that, another celebration with his supporters tonight in Iowa. Correspondent Peter Ducey is in Des Moines right now. Good evening, Peter. Good evening, Chris. It was just a few minutes ago that the president-elect left the campus of Ohio State University. He headed for John Glenn International Airport there in Columbus on his way here to Iowa. But he did meet for about 40 minutes with victims of that recent stabbing spree on campus and the first responders who stepped in to save them. We just saw the victims and the families, and we were... Uh, really, I mean, these were really brave people, amazing people. Uh, the police and first responders were incredible. The job uh, done in particular by one young gentleman was incredible. The president-elect hosted a pair of potential Secretary of State contenders in Manhattan. Retired four-star Admiral James Stavridis and former Ford and Boeing CEO Alan Mulally. Stavridis was actually vetted as a running mate earlier this year for Hillary Clinton and used to be a big critic of Mr. Trump. I think he does not seem to have a grasp of the issues uh, that are facing the nation. But after emerging from Trump Tower's golden elevators, the retired admiral sounded like an admirer. Well, I found it to be a, a very interesting and a very informed conversation. Mullally's invitation is intriguing because his resume includes stints at two recent Trump targets. Boeing, singled out earlier this week as spending too much on the next generation of Air Force One, and Ford, which Mr. Trump repeatedly warns against building any more of its cars out of the country. You're not going to have any cars coming across the border unless you pay a 35% tax. That's it. Transition officials are stressing that Ford, under Mullally, was the only big American car company not to take bailout money. The Trump cabinet room continued quickly filling up today with the announcement that Mr. Trump wants Andy Puzder as labor secretary. Puzder is the CEO of CKE Restaurants, which runs Hardee's and Carl's Jr., and the businessman regularly advocates against raising the minimum wage. That labor department pick followed a night of fighting with organized labor. The head of a union representing some Indiana carrier workers thinks the president-elect inflated the number of jobs saved there, telling the Washington Post this week, quote, Trump and Pence, they pulled a dog and pony show on the numbers. At Real Donald Trump on Twitter replied, quote, Chuck Jones, who is president of United Steelworkers 1999, has done a terrible job representing workers. No wonder companies flee country. There are also new questions today about whether or not Mr. Trump will completely sever ties with his company by Inauguration Day. As the New York Times reports, he may keep a stake. Trump lawyer Michael Cohen responded this morning. And everybody's concentrating on what he's going to do with the business. They're going to find out on December 15th. Here in Des Moines, it is very, very cold out, but it's looking like it'll be a warm welcome inside High V Hall for the president-elect, who will be joined tonight on the third stop of the Thank You Victory Tour by the president-elect and this state's governor, Terry Branstad, who the next administration hopes to send to China as the next U.S. ambassador there. Chris? Peter Ducey reporting from Des Moines. Peter, thanks for that.